following is a presentation of the High Spot Podcast. Making their way to the ring. Talking about the world of professional wrestling. The team of Jeff Martin and the trendsetter, Brian Perga. The Jersey Wrecking Crew. Like I said, this is just, you know, like the stuff that you, you, you deal with, and that's what vendors, promoters, they deal with from time to time. And is, like I, like I said, like I don't know how how torn that relationship was with Rob Fury. Is there anything, like, any any way that that bridge could be mended? No, anything absolutely like, not. No? That, that bridge no. has been burned, blown up, buried, bottom of the ocean, and Godzilla took a shit on it. I mean, it's it's not... So you're saying there's a chance? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, if that's dumb, how you want to take right it, if there's, yeah. a ch- um, at, so, l- at least with me, I can't speak for anybody else. No. With me, but for would, you, I, there's. I would never, never work with for Rob Fury ever, ever again. I gave him three tries. Yeah, it's a three you strikes know. you're out, yeah. basically. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um. So uh, Andrew Kella is to me. Uh, he, he's a really good dude. Yeah. Uh, Go pro wrestling, uh, mm-hmm. everything like that is just uh, just the work he puts into it. Uh, Go pro wrestling, actually working with you know does stuff for AEW, and they're really a you know a, a tremendous just working machine. Um, just your thoughts on Andrew? Because from what everything we've worked with him and stuff like that, it's been it's been good vibes. I like Andrew a lot. Uh, Andrew is a lot like me, where um, he kind of just says what he feels sometimes and doesn't think before he posts. Whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I don't even have that struggle. It's just click. I don't, I'm just not click even thinking like about whatever. it. Just click and go, you know, walk away, come back to 17 notifications. Like, whoops. Um, I, I like Andrew. Andrew's a good guy. He's honest. He's solid. Um, you know, we we talk a lot. Uh, I'm someone that's up late at night, and at, at times he's up late at night, so we kind of bullshit at night. Um, <laughs> you know, we help each other when it comes to – talent pool we help each other when it comes to even just obtaining photos you know he's big on the uh the promos Mm -hmm. so like he'll i'll have a talent and be like hey you know i got a promo an original promo and i'll be like hey all right send it over and i get to make copies of this promo from my signing and then i get his original sign and send it back to him you know it's like you scratch my back i'll scratch yours and he's he's good with that he's somebody very easy to work with and obviously, like definitely the seal of approval because he's you know does stuff. His company, GoPro Wrestling, mm-hmm. is everywhere filming uh, promotions in Jersey, in you know in New York and stuff. And yeah, I haven't uh, been to one of his shows though. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was what, a couple years ago in, in Wayne that he did. It was like before eight, before, right before the guys. That's right before the, to, some of the major signees yeah. that were yeah. going yeah. that on that roster. Before everybody became going. an executive vice president. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right before oh, then. <laughs> but it's a really good show, and and. I don't know. It's like when I saw this list myself personally, and I see some of the people around, I'm like, oh, wow. Like, I knew some of those, but I'm like, I mean, I, I, can only, I can't speak for you, Jeff, but the majority that we, Jeff and I have spent time with promoters slash vendors, it's all been positive experiences. Yeah, they've all been good to us, man, because, yeah. again, we're not like as the inner workings as you guys would do. We've been Even if the relationships have ended, they've ended on a positive note. Yeah, we're like, yeah, okay, right. well, yeah. we I just mean, go our separate ways. And, and if any, anybody's listening to this and they want to follow along, um, d365promotions.com. Um, you can scroll down the page. It's the list of damage. Yeah. So you know they can they can see the list and follow along. Obviously, you're gonna have to make one edit out of here because this is one that I yeah. was I was taking aback like this. And listen, one of the things that come out of COVID too has been like the speak out movement, right? And people talking about this and naming people. And of course, there's a lot of wrestlers that have been you know involved in this stuff. And listen, let, let let's be let's be first and foremost, man. Like we're in a society now that you do anything. Anything you're gonna, people are gonna remember, or they're gonna call you out on it eventually. And people keep, you know, people keep Instagram, IG, you know, uh, direct messages. Uh, some people are just foolish. Some people think they, you know, they're untouchable. But you know, the speak out movement. There's a lot of female wrestlers, female people in in, in wrestling who have called out a lot of wrestlers. Um, you know, and a lot of people have paid for it. Joy Ryan right now is is uh, how we how you say in French toxic. You know, he's toxic, whatever. Yeah. But you know, this was really something that man for somebody to keep this identity, like this other identity. Obviously, you've worked with him, yeah, uh, and, a lot. and and yeah, and to maybe have a friendship, you know, to yes. build the friendship with him. He was he. The opinion on him would be pretty much the opinion you'd get from anybody prior to this happening yeah. was that. 
Um, if you know, we'll just say his name, Colin, Colin West, West yep. aka Patrick Shea, was one of the good guys in the business. He was very easy to get along with. He was always positive, gun ho about the business. Um, and he always wanted to help. Like he would show up at other people's shows and just soak it in, you know, just absorb what was going on and try to take that experience and kind of use it to do what he wanted to do. You know, like as a kid, I was a huge fan of like going to hotels and I actually wanted to go to school for hotel management and I wanted to build hotels from all the things that I experienced and I had a notebook, weird, notebook <laughs> of all the things that I loved about a hotel and then the back of the notebook was all the things I didn't like about the hotel. And I wanted to build the perfect hotel of all the things that I loved and keeping out all the things I didn't like. You know, this was pre-Wi-Fi and all that stuff. <laughs> so, um, so like he would do that with wrestling. Um, I booked stuff for him when he used to run CTW. It was a uh, change the world wrestling. It was an all fundraiser charity show. Uh, I booked talent for him. I've done podcasts at his show. Um, when he took over Synergy Wrestling originally, um, one of the first things I booked him was um, Jazz versus Maria Manic for the NWA Women's Title. So. I, you know, I've had him on my podcast at least four times that I went back and looked. And, yeah, when I saw what happened, you know, what came out, my first thing that that kind of – I got showed this information the night before it came out. My first thing was, like, is that really him? Yeah, you, you're questioning. his picture? Basically. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, it looks like him. Is it him? Like, I never knew that 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 was his real name. So I'm, like, taken back with, like, shit. First thing in my mind is, why is he using an alias? Did he legally change his name? You know, like, I'm thinking about all the other stuff, not the, what the important stuff was, is what he did. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, which is disgusting, and I won't even discuss what he did, but... No, but you're looking at yeah. it in terms like you thought I'm you trying knew to this find, person. I'm trying to debunk it like it's like, yeah. no, this it can't, can't be him. You don't want to believe it's him at all. You <laughs> like don't. literally, I went and into I like debunking many, mode. And I don't think many people would say it's bad to, for you to do that because yeah. if you've known somebody for a certain amount of time and then you find out something like this, you're like, yeah. you're looking for it. No, this, this has to be a mistake. This, and then this the second thing the in my person. mind is like, what prompted somebody to even find him? Yeah, like on this certain day, you know, wherever this came out, and it's just, it was, it's, it's crazy, man. I mean, and it's like, you can't really honestly, I just wanted to think, like, how long do you think he thought in his mind he was going to be able to get away with this? I have no idea. Like, where, how far was it going to go? Well, it just like, tells you how bad this, the wrestling situation is without an athletic commission in the state of New Jersey. Yeah. Because it, he would never have been able to run in New York. Never. So it was just it was strictly Jersey. It was Jersey. never yeah. You only ran in Jersey and there's no athletic commission. So there's nobody to do a background check on this guy. So everybody's like, oh, they need to do background check. I've been saying this since 2013 that promoters need to have background checks done on them before they're handed a uh, promoter's license or they're handed insurance to run shows at venues. But that's never gonna happen without an athletic commission. Then other people argue that the athletic commission ruins it because they don't like wrestling. You know, they, they like boxing. They don't like wrestling. We all know what happened in New York with the intergender match. They stopped the match in the middle because they didn't think a guy and a girl should wrestle each other. You know, they were wrong. Um, so a lot of companies are leaving New York and they're coming to New Jersey, you know, and that's why they lose their athletic license and then they come to Jersey where there is none. Obviously, things like that have to change. Unfortunately, like, unfortunately, it looks like we have like, there's going to have to be more cases like this. Yeah. And that's just sad, man. That's just such a situation. It's like, who did he piss off Yeah, for them to have to do that that extensive research yeah. to find a name that nobody knew? And obviously, though, we're glad that this was found out because, again, you don't want anybody capitalizing. But now everybody's going to tiptoe with yeah. everything now. They're like, oh, I'm afraid I'm going to piss somebody off and they're going to do an extensive background check yeah. and try to you know, drag my name through the mud. Me, personally, I don't give a shit. 
if yeah. I piss anybody off. But on is, this isn't show. that the day and age we live right. in nowadays? Where like, I have nothing. I have nothing to hide. Yeah. No. Of course. Yeah. Because you put it all out there. Of course. Right. But there are other people that do, and that's right. why in this day and age now, even with COVID added in, everybody's walking. On As people shows. are listening right careful. now, they're doing a background check on Kevin S. Nasta. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone, like, I don't blame the wrestlers because how they're how are they? No, I know, of course not. I know Terry Holloway was felt well. The guilty. only thing that pissed me off about the wrestlers was they started to make it about themselves. Yes. Yeah. When you start that's saying, thing. I hate right. when you say. I'm I will no longer yeah. do business. As of today, I'm dropping my title. Right. I'm like the company doesn't exist. Who cares? It's, it's it, you know, it just uh, it to me. It's like when you do that. I see that, then I then I get angry, and then I start to troll. I'm like, oh, I'll buy the title from you for two hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. And in no way, though, if you're a talent, should you feel uh, guilty, man? You you think. Th- Kevin was duped, you know, and yeah. he, he, a lot of people were, yeah. you know, and I was working with him before half of these people that, that came out and said something were working for him. I was working with him before Synergy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he did, you know, put out like an apology and he said he's not going to try to get into the business anymore. We'll see, you know, but I, I, he look, can't he, anymore. He, look, he, he, he did. I, I just had this conversation with my partner, Amy, and I said, um, what he did is terrible. I, it is, there's no way to even twist that around. No. Okay. And make him sound like, feel like he's the victim. He's not. Okay. The victims are the victims. But we don't know if his life goal from that point was to do right by everybody mm-hmm. and changing his life and trying to live a positive life to put all that behind him. Yeah. We don't know that. I would. I can only assume that's what it was. But unfortunately, the the part is that you do that off of a lie. Right. And that's where... And, and as, in a business as, where there's going to be kids there, too, which that's the other thing that's like, kind of yeah, like, why? Nice thing too, yeah. Of all businesses to get in, why get into a business where 40% of your customer base are kids? Yeah. It's... Uh, and that's the sad part because wrestling was at a high point in Apex where everyone was enjoying the fruits of the wrestling promotions. Uh, and then we hit COVID, and then unfortunately we had you know the speak out movement with. And it's not only that, man. Guys, like you guys aren't untouchable, dude. You guys can't be DMing and thinking yeah. that no one's gonna save those stuff and everything. And and one thing that I wanted to touch on, Brian, that um, I think is something that you know hasn't no one's talked about because as soon as it happened, people uh, who worked with this person and I and I and we worked with him as well, okay. And that was uh, Mark Adam Haggerty, and the whole situation right there, boom, goes off the grid. Whatever, and in my opinion, what he did again is something like, dude, you can't, you can't be doing that stuff. But then for the promotions, who I believe use him as a, and I want to say it right now, they use him as a mascot because of his sexuality and because he was, you know, openly gay and everything like that. And wow, he's going to be the face of our because we're open, uh, you know, we we we're open. There's an openness. We're in, uh, all about equality and stuff like that. And I, the guy was just like, boom, off the grid like that. And yeah. I don't think no one. No, has ever talked about it like that, and those are the same companies that again that used them as their f- face on poster boards and yeah. everything like that. And then just all of a sudden, as soon as that happened, boom, just off the grid. Crazy man. Yeah, the the best thing I can say that you know anybody was affected by any of these uh, these people that did what they did. You know, anybody's a victim of them. Um, there's a huge community out there that you can reach out to anybody and people are going to be there for you. You know, one of the first people I've reached out to was Shane Fair. Okay. I know it devastated him with Colin. Devastated him. Okay. He kind of looked up to him, even though he was like seven inches tall. Than him. <laughs> Big but, dude, uh, yeah. <laughs> Big guy. But, um, and the first person I reached out to was Shane. And I said, dude, I'm like, I know. I get it. If you need me, I'm here anytime. I don't give a shit if you call me at three o'clock in the morning. You know, and he appreciated that. Okay, that needs to be more in in wrestling. There needs to be someone that you can turn to all the time. You know, people travel in pairs or they go to shows in pairs because they feel safe. But if that promoter has a reputation, or you've heard whispers of this promoter having a reputation of you know being inappropriate, then why work there? Is it really worth that seventy five dollars, that hundred bucks, that travel expense? Is it really worth it? That you have to travel with a friend to feel safe? Is it worth it? Me, I don't think it's worth it. I mean, I'm a guy, but I, if I'm I'm not going to travel somewhere where I'm uncomfortable, you're going to see me driving through Camden for no reason. Yeah. No, I don't feel comfortable. There's no reason for me to be there. Yeah, you know. So 
I mean, it's a bad analogy, but still. But uh, <laughs> but I'm just trying to put. You know, somebody said, "Oh, here's a hundred dollars. Go through, the, through, go through, drive through the heart of Camden." Yeah, no, no, that's uncomfortable. No, thanks. Thank I'm good. I feel safe not doing that. So it's true, but again, you'll you'll never be able to tempt people's desperations too. That, like, for example, maybe you or I or Jeff wouldn't do that. But right. if somebody says, "Here's hundred dollars. Go through, you know, the bad part of Baltimore." Yeah. If I'm that desperate for it, hoping that I get out alive and unscathed. Right. You know, maybe that, maybe, some, that, maybe you that $100 me some crab legs. Maybe we're talking. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I can, can entice you to do that. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. All right. So who, who, who's a? Uh... Well, I mean, <laughs> we can go through. Yeah, I mean, we have the list of Jericho here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, look, so, look, but but I mean, the list of Nasta. There's a good list of people here. You know, mm-hmm. you've guys worked with Pro Wrestling Magic. Oh I, yeah, I love all yeah. of them. Yep. Yeah. Okay, and I've I've uh, I've been with them since the UWA Elite days when they were there because I used to do their shows too. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've watched all these guys from go from UWA Elite, JCW, um, and then hop around. They did Warriors of Wrestling. They did you know all these companies and then now with Pro Wrestling Magic. And I'm really happy for all of them. Like I, Steve Off, love Steve Off. You know, he's, he's a crazy mofo. I love him. <laughs> um, he's a good guy and I've booked people for his show and he's, you know, outstanding. Like I, I can't even say anything bad about the guy. You know, Jim Burgoyne, Lucky 13, never been to any of his shows, but as a promoter, vendor, he's a great guy. I, I love him to death. Um, Mission Pro Wrestling, the Savants, Savantes, uh, Thunder Rosa and her husband Brian, all women's program. I mean, le- legit from the broadcasters to the ring announcer to the people who book the shows. They're all female. Okay. They've been working a lot with Rodney Mack and Jazz, with uh, SWE Fury and um, the Dog Pound school that they got. They're all working together in Texas. And that's two companies working together. It can happen. Mm-hmm. It can. What a the, concept yeah. that is. Um, you know, these are all good people. I've had all positive experiences with WrestlePro. Matt Tremont at H2O had all positive experiences. Big event, high spots. Um, WrestleCade which I feel bad for, you know, Tracy Mars down in North Carolina with Russell Cade because they still don't even know if they're running this November for this year. So that's still up in the air. How fun was that to do? It was It was great. It was like 3,500 people. It's on Thanksgiving wow. weekend sometimes it was too, right? Sa- it's, the thang- it's the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Saturday that's something, after Thanksgiving. That's something yeah. that Jeff yeah. and I wanted to do. Yeah. 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 Down yeah. There too. So hopefully. I like, mean, I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, Saturday after Thanksgiving. Like, you know, yeah. it's a day after Black Friday. I'm like, everybody's going to be shopping. No, 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 no. Was, oh, they're shopping right for yeah, the wrestling they're shopping merchandise. For wrestling merch, but yeah, you know, um, there's their Christmas gifts. Pe- people like. have issues with Jason Maples and Heroes and Legends. I don't. Never had a problem with him. You know, I don't. Why? Why have people had a problem? Uh, with him? There was some thing that came up where he went to a show and he um, did like a, a consignment for somebody. So he was getting somebody sent him cards and he went to Luger and Sting got the stuff signed, sent it back to him, and they said they were fake. And Tony Hunter, who brought in Luger, said it was fake. And I, to be honest with you, I don't know. And mm-hmm. I don't have no reason why Jason would even do that. Like, he ref- refunded the guy money immediately. So to my whole thing is, like, all right, you refunded the money, why do you even bring it up? Okay, mm-hmm. but fine. He runs Heroes of Legends in Indiana, which I'll be in at the end of April. Oh, yeah, Indiana's, yeah. That's, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, that, that area, too. Like, the what's that Chicago promotion, too, that, that uh, Warriors? Warrior. That's a, yeah, yeah, we saw a show there. I mean, good stuff in the yep. in, in the. Two areas. of my clients are going to be uh, battling it out for the women's title: uh, Kylie Ray and Thunder Rosa. Look at that. In Chicago, yeah, that yeah. that was a great show we went to. I think it was uh, was it oh, for, for uh, all out? Or? It was for all in. For all in. Oh yeah, yeah they were all there. Yeah. Um, so two guys here, t- uh, just because I've seen them and they look like characters to me, and and maybe you can tell me two funny stories: Joe Rosillo and Richie <laughs> DiGregorio. De- These guys are. I always see them. They're characters. Haven't yet met them personally, but you got to tell me some funny, just a funny um, story about these two guys. Joe is new to the game uh, mm-hmm. when it comes to doing the vending and promoting stuff. Uh, I know he used to uh, kind of like pick up stuff, I think, at like Russell Pro, like the, or GCW. That might have been GCW. Um, when they had a talent in and they would like want to sublet to a promoter to come in and handle the business there, mm-hmm. Joe would be like that guy. Okay. So we started doing it where he would go to conventions and stuff like that. Joe is, um, he's a funny guy. I mean, he's, um, he's like four feet tall. Um, now he's like five, four, or something like that. But, um, 
He could take a joke. Let me tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> take ribs. Oh, my God. I, I give it to him so bad. So bad. But then, like, five minutes later, I'm messaging him, you know, just messaging back and forth, screwing with each other. So it's like, I, I don't have a problem with Joe. He's, he's a good guy. He means well. Uh, he's new to the business, so sometimes it looks like he's really, really overwhelmed and stressed out. But sometimes that's just people's personalities when you throw stuff at them. You know, that's just how they react to it, and that's how they are all the time. It doesn't mean that they're they might be stressed out or they might be like you know out of their mind. It, that's just the way they react to things, but they might still get the job done. Yeah. And so. at the end, that not that what the thing is to get the job done, no matter yes. how you're handling it, basically? Just get the job done and make sure the talent's happy. That's that's the main yeah. that's the main thing. So, so like the golden rules of being a promoter. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, uh, get the job done. Yeah, unwritten yeah. rules. Uh, make sure the talent's happy. Talent's happy is number one. Yeah. Absolutely number one. That talent needs to be happy because word of mouth could ruin you. Yeah, you so, don't want to. Yeah, definitely don't want to that's be. That's like everybody, anybody can say what they want about me. They can say, uh, that guy's guy an asshole. He's got a big mouth, runs his mouth, you know. Even though I have to, you know, everything he says is pretty much factual, but I don't like hearing it, so he's an asshole. Yes, of course. But they can never say a bad thing about my company or how my staff is or how we handle anything that we do. So never. You can say whatever you want about me. Mm-hmm. I don't care. I don't care. But my company, you can never say a bad thing about it. No. And I, I take pride in that. Oh, well, it's definitely and, and and Richie, he seems like he's also Richie D. Gregorio. Uh I call him the neurotic nutbag. <laughs> um Richie has been doing this about six months longer than I have. And um I don't know. It's it's hard to explain him. He um <laughs> one word. If if you besides can. neurotic, um difficult. Okay. He you just don't know what's going on in that head of his. Um, you know he wants to do one thing, and then he'll do something else. He'll ask for advice and do the total opposite. Um, and then he's just – the pandemic has uh, kind of brought out some of the bad side of people, and he's one of those people. Uh, the bad side of Richie de Greg has been brought out during the pandemic, and he's been pissing a lot of people off, a lot of fellow – promoter vendors off and um he's not the type of guy where he should be doing that because he's on his own you know he needs to stop hiding behind other people and having them fight his battle because it's only gonna last so long because it's only so long that somebody's gonna fight your battles they're gonna mm. just say eventually you say you know what they're gonna push you into the deep end yeah so they're gonna cut ties own. basically yeah, and say it's, not own, it's not worth it's not worth and he's not learning that's the thing he's not learning from his mistakes now you burn a bridge here, and then that person mends that bridge for you, and then you keep burning it, and you keep doing it over and over and over again. I don't think Richie's a bad guy. I really don't. I just don't think he was brought into this business properly. You know, he saw it as a fan. He came in. He latched on with, um, I don't know time-wise, but I, I want to say first he, he latched on with John Minichino, okay. who uh, does a vent Warren and... Um, East Coast auctions, and he's one of the partners of Legends of the Ring. And um, and then he burned a bridge there. And then he moved on to Eric Sims, which everybody knows Eric Sims. He's as carny as they are. I mean, he pretty much, that should be his middle name. I think he invented the name. <laughs> um, so he, you know, and then he went, he moved on, and then he started doing stuff on his own. And Richie means well, but Richie doesn't have the proper training in any sort of business, whether it's retail or in this in this case private. So he doesn't know how to react to things. So he reacts poorly to things and that sets off other people. So I think it's just a matter of you know, if they did a seminar of uh know proper ethics of uh how to to run your company and react Do you think to it would be worth it though if somebody did that because that my thing has always been like well, how to ha- college yeah <laughs> but we all know that a lot of people you know go through a community college and that's yeah. a whole different story but you, you but, can you, mm-hmm. you literally can i mean there's plenty of people that went to community college and took business and then you know moved on to other bigger schools but you know i went to the college of staten island i took business and organizational management i worked in retail my whole life i didn't even have a choice in the matter you know, my mother was in retail my whole life. And, you know, my first job was working with her 
taking in deliveries on Maiden Lane in Manhattan for American Greetings. And mm. that's what I did. I'm, you know, bringing in 400 pound boxes of greeting cards. So that's how I started in the business. You know, I had my own store for uh, almost seven years, moved into New Jersey, started the whole wrestling thing. You know, I had uh, worked with Major League Baseball from 2005 to 2010, worked at Staten Island Yankees from 2005 until last year. So, like, you know, I have that field, but mine was always retail. So I have that understanding where customers come first. That's it, plain and simple. You don't take care of that customer, that customer don't come back, and that's potential money that you'll never see again. And if they go and they run their mouth to other people, that's more potential money that's never going to show up at your doorstep. And I, that's what I think that a lot of these promoters, they have a sense of entitlement that they're owed the business. Like they're owed customers walking up to their tables and buying stuff. Because I brought talent, you should be here. That's not the way it works. You have to earn that. Just like respect is earned, not given. It's the same thing. Yeah, and that's mostly what I've seen uh, when Jeff and I have, have run the rounds, we've gone to conventions too, where it seems like promoters slash vendors, I feel like, because they have a certain name or a certain talent, then now they're entitled for you mm-hmm. to, you know, why isn't the payout coming in? Well, again, maybe you didn't promote it well. Maybe, you know, in the sense your talent didn't promote well. A lot of factors that go right. into it. And it that's, just, that's not just pr- the vendors. No. That's promoters, the guys who run the conventions. Yeah. Same thing. You know, if you, if, you know, if you go to a show and 300 people are there, Great. And then all of a sudden, two shows later, you have 150 people. That's on you. You, That's your show. That's on you. Don't blame the people in the room bringing talent. We're still bringing talent. And if people aren't coming to the show, that's on you. You're not promoting properly or you're not promoting to the right channels or you're not bringing the people on your super ticket that would get the people in the front door. There's only so much we can do. Yeah. You know, I can bring in Sting. I'm only going to bring in a certain amount of people into that front door. But if nobody knows that Sting is going to be there, right? What's no. the point? No. You know. But there's nobody else for them to see there for them to go to. They might just wait to another show that Sting's on. Yeah. Well. You know, like oh, Sting's going to be some so and so. You know, f- four weeks from now, we'll just go to that show. They, you know, at least I know what's on that show. Yeah. You know, why true. am I going to drive to the middle of nowhere to go see Sting when there's literally nobody else in that room I want to get or nobody on the super ticket I want to get? I got to pay $40 to get in and then pay another $120 at the table for what? So it's it's a team effort and everybody should work together. And the problem is nobody works together as much as they say they should and they want to and they don't. And, you know, I've done podcasts where I've put promoters on blast, you know, convention promoters because they're not doing the right thing by the vendors. If you don't want the vendors there, then run a private signing. Run yeah. a sign, bring in your, your eight people, or whatever it is, put them in one room and invite fans to come there and that's it. Don't run a convention. You don't need, you don't need a convention so you can walk around, pat yourself on the back, say, hey, I've been doing this for 25 years. Who cares? Yeah, no. You're right. only as good as your last booking. Definitely. Only as good as your last book. And we're talking to uh, Kevin Nash. Kevin drop the mic there. I was, drop the mic I know, there. Honestly, <laughs> don't. That's an expensive headset. Don't drop it. I'm talking to Kevin Nash, the president of Damage 365 Promotions. Uh, man, man, we could go for this for, for hours, but we got to you know, make sure that uh, we save Kevin for his upcoming uh, gigs <laughs> coming up here. Uh, you got one coming up, the Wrestling Universe, um, uh, on, on June, June 5th. You've got... Uh, uh, a signing there too that you announced is Crystal, uh, Crystal Marshall. Yes, going to be there. Just just announced that. Yeah, and then you've also got uh, Mike McGurk and uh, Kylie Ray uh, on April seventeenth as well. Too. Correct. So I mean, you've kind of gotten somebody that really took time off from wrestling, kind of like left it, and you are one of the first people to bring her back on board here. It's the same method that is the reason why I've always also been, been able to bring in Kimona, who hasn't done anything. And she's exclusive to you guys. Right, right? now you she's guys exclusive, exclusive Congratulations. we took care of mm-hmm. Kimona. Mm-hmm. And she appreciated that, and that she showed that appreciation by saying, you know what, I'll go through you for all the bookings. People want to reach out to you to book me elsewhere, fine, but it goes through you. And the reason why I'm able to get someone like Kimona or somebody like Kyler Ray is respectful persistence. Not blowing up their messages with passive-aggressive statements. 
saying, oh, I guess you don't need the money. You got to see some of the messages that they send me. I can only imagine, basically. I mean, it's just like, I mean, people on this list <laughs> sending messages to talent saying, hey, you know, you want to do this weekend. And then if you don't get back to them within like 48 hours, they send another message saying, oh, I guess you don't, do the, you don't need the money. You must be doing well for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah cuz that's going to get them to book with you now. Something as stupid as that. Like, why? What what is the reason for that? I'm going to point Jealousy. you out at the show when they see no. you and say, yeah. "Hey, there's the asshole." <laughs> <laughs> Jealousy, maybe in sense of uh like you said entitlement, oh, it's like all they're owed it. Yeah. And and it's funny that we we've been talking this entire time and when I when I'm listening to you talk, I'm just sometimes like having my mouth wide open because it seems like the, the main thing in terms of respect is a really foreign concept nowadays. Yes. It really is because you have conducted yourself, Kevin, very respectfully. It's just why you're, you're in the situation you're in right now. We, we, have, three, we have three talents right now uh, that we're exclusive with, Kimona being one, CJ Dunning is another, and Brad Maddox is a third. Um, and that's all because in their mind is what we took a chance on them when they felt they didn't have any worth. And we showed them that wasn't the case. And we treated them with respect. We made them feel like the center of attention. And when they went home, they felt they had a good time. They were taken care of. And that's why they had no no problem saying, hey, you know what? I'm only working with you. So if you want to get me bookings elsewhere, just make sure, you know, you take care of all the details. You know, it's that's fine. You know, a lot of wrestling, you know, and then you got people, you know, fans are like, oh, you know, the wrestling promoters ruined the business. Because we had to pay them to be there, and then we pass on that fee to the table. Where a lot of the fans think, well, if they just show up to the show, the wrestler just shows up to the show, it'll be a lot less money because they're not being paid to sit there. Or they can grab one from the airport, or they grab one from the hotel, or in the bathroom, where wherever, <laughs> you know. Again, but that's a sense of entitlement. You know, fans have a sense of entitlement, and then promoters have a sense of entitlement. Talent has a sense of entitlement too. You know, everybody's guilty of having that sense of entitlement. So it's not, it's not just one person. It's just not me pointing fingers. We all do. I do at times. You know, when I'm talking to a talent, first thing in my mind is loyalty. Mm-hmm. You know, so when they turn around and say, "Oh no, I'm going to do a booking with somebody else," they offer me more money. I'm I'm insulted. Like I'm hurt. Because I'm like, whoa, I'm like, I came to you, we're going to take care of you. Like, you're our top priority. I'm going to treat you better than family because I don't even like my family. <laughs> okay, so, and then you're going to turn around and go somewhere else because they're giving you an extra grand? It's not saying that you're worth the extra grand, but that person is just doing it so I don't get you. And that, to me is I, I have a sense of entitlement because I think because I speak to them that I'm entitled to them. <laughs> so I get insulted. No, but I can understand it, that too because you felt like you've earned that type of respect that granted of, of, of the main difference is the example that you're going to go to this other place because they're offering you a grand more. Not that I'm not willing to give you another grand, but is that other grand really worth like we, the example right. we spoke about before? You know, are, are you willing to go down a dark alley for $100? Is right. that extra grand really worth it to you when you know what we bring to the table as opposed to this other place just offering you an extra money and you don't know what's going to happen and now it could be the worst experience of your life. Right. What happens when you go with this person and they screw up the, the booking and your entire weekend is an absolute shit fest? To yeah. them, you're and just you $1,000. You're going to come back to me now and say, yeah. hey, by yeah. the way, you want to do a booking next week? No, beat the, hit, yeah. hit the bricks, buddy. <laughs> with Kevin, like, you, there's a personal relationship or with other people it could be just like hey you're just a name you know what i mean that they're bringing in you're not gonna get uh you know the, the extra- twisted sisters were at my oh. wedding oh yeah, yeah. all right yeah. <laughs> uh, dude, i can't believe since jeff and i have started doing this there we have been very fortunate i don't use the word a lot sometimes because sometimes i'm like we're not fortunate at all but we have been fortunate with a lot of opportunities that are presented to us and i feel a lot of it had to do with the manner in which we conducted ourselves and then i could just remember sitting in the manhattan center on a cold winter's night getting ready to see final battle and out at downstairs walks adam hangman page when the bull club was really really hot and in comes in marty scroll and the people from Honor have always been great to us and we are sitting there 
Connor Connor is talking to Marty Skrull. Jeff was the equivalent of a 16-year-old girl at an instant concert, basically. <laughs> he was the, the equivalent of that, how excited it was. And the same I felt, too, because, wow, I'm talking to Marty, and we're actually having a great conversation, and he's not looking at me as if, oh, we, would this interview just end type of mentality? It was right. great. So he, from a promoter standpoint, what was that one booking that you can remember, like, oh, wow, I cannot believe I got this, because in the end, as a professional I'm being, I'm fanboying at the Probably the time. first time I ever worked with Bischoff. Yeah. Um, you know, only thing I knew about Bischoff was what he was portrayed on TV. Yeah. Now, this was uh, 2018 Orlando WrestleCon. Uh, he was inducting DDP into the Hall of Fame. And um, I was working with, at that, that weekend, I had Thea Trinidad, which that was the weekend she signed back with WWE. Yes. Um, I had April Hunter. Got a picture of her, by the way. <laughs> I contributed to three to um, <laughs> that I, day. I had April Hunter. I had Amber O'Neill. Okay. Um, I was supposed to have Saraya Knight, but that was the year that the page video came out and they canceled all yeah, their, yeah, their yeah. stuff. And I had Bruce Pritchard. And Bruce was like, when I was negotiating with Bruce, and I have to say the, the reason why I got the Bruce Pritchard uh, booking was from Dave Mooch of MZ Promotions, someone that helped me, somebody that I have helped mm-hmm. in the past, him and Vinny. Yeah. So, by the way, I have to plug them they have a, a yeah. store in the green building in the english town flea market they sell wrestling and ufc stuff so go go see them okay. i don't want to get a text as soon as, <laughs> as soon as this air is saying thanks jerk um <laughs> so bruce was like would you be interested in bringing in eric bish i don't even think he finished the sentence and i was like yes <laughs> and um he was like all right you know let me talk to him, you know, and then I'll get back to you. And he gives me, and then he gives me his phone number. I'm like, oh. wait, you want me to call him? I know, exactly. Like, you got to call him? I got to call Eric Bischoff? I'm like, oh, crap. Literally took me like six hours to. Muster up the. Uh... Yeah, I had to pull my <laughs> cojones out of my socks. Did like, you have to like to write out what you were going to say so you could read uh, so you didn't forget well, what was, was going to say? I was like rehearsing in the shower. <laughs> like, yeah, it was great. It was like, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen. You know, I was like, it was, yeah, it was, I was, it was nervous, nerve wracking. Um. Then I realized after literally like two minutes that it's all Eric. He's just a regular guy, and you know he's a businessman. He knows his worth. He's gonna get his worth, or he's not gonna do it. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. He's a family guy. You know, he doesn't want to leave his house if he doesn't have to, and he won't leave the house unless he knows you're gonna make money. So he's a loyal guy. You know, he's not one of those guys. Who's just you know, he's not Greg Valentine. You know, he's not gonna take any booking <laughs> anywhere at any time. You know, and it sit there and look like someone stole his sandwich. So he's not that way. <laughs> and very, and honestly, very like, very smart business wise. Oh my god! Like, I mean, guy is, he's like, I'm walking. It's like he's talking like, about another guy. This guy, let who, me tell you, Kevin was so nice enough to hook up Eric Bischoff with us to listen, talk to. So, this listen, guy was a nervous wreck listen, coming up. I, like, I what, understand. What, what do I say to Eric? What do I say? I what do you mean it. you say to Eric? I was like, Brian, you took the. News. I was like, I no, get, no, no. Get it, this though. is yours, Jeff. This is yours. No, but Kevin's such a good dude. He's there, like you know, he's doing thirty things. He's like, yeah, you want to talk to Eric? Eric and Eric, mind his business, whatever. Didn't have to give me two minutes the time of day and Ken was like could you do an interview with these guys and he goes sure come on over see that's the way Eric is and he's yeah. such a, like and, and if congratulations you, if by you, the way if you work for the if you work with Eric and I think Jeff was also caught up in what you said before too <laughs> caught up in what he knew from watching him in yes. WCW and not realizing in two minutes within the interview, Jeff had already calmed down and stopped hyperventilating. was like, it's just a normal guy. He's first smart. interview I ever did was with Matt Stryker, and I probably stuttered through the first minute and a half of the, mm-hmm. of the interview. And Matt Stryker is like the easiest guy in yeah. the planet Earth to yeah. talk to. You know, like he's, a, he's a wrestling fan who wrestles. Like he mm-hmm. loves the business. So like I get it when it's somebody that he's intimidating. Mm-hmm. You know, he's an intimidating character that you remember on TV. And then when you translate that to meeting him in person, it's kind of like, uh, mm-hmm. like crap. Yeah. But- you know, if I, I'll say, I'll be like, hey, Eric, you know, do an interview with that guy? Yeah, okay. Like, he, he's not, he doesn't say no to me because he knows I'm never going to put him in a situation where course, it's going to make yeah. him look bad or feel uncomfortable. Yeah, and again, so smart about the business. And just congratulations to him. You have a lot of alums going into two. the Hall of Fame. He's two. got Molly Holly yep. and Eric Bischoff. Oh, and Molly Holly, I got to say, too, I got, I got to throw this in there. What a sweetheart of a person. Yep. One of, honestly, the nicest people I've ever met. We've yeah. met some pretty nice yeah. people. Yeah. And I was so happy to find out she's going to be inducted. Now, depending on how people think about what the Hall of Fame is, is up to them. But, man, Molly Holly, what a, an amazing person. I saw photos on your Facebook and all social media yep. of her wearing the Molly Holly gear. Yeah. Miss Madness. Or, or Miss Madness. Yep. And no hesitation, most likely, from her to do no, it. She no. was happy to do she, it. She only likes to do the Molly 
Molly Holly one first because then when she puts on the wig, um, it puts a crease on her forehead. Okay. So she doesn't want to do the wig yeah. first and then Molly Holly second because yeah. she's got a fo- yeah. she got a crease on her forehead for all the photo ops. <laughs> so like, um, but there's another woman that's very loyal to me. Like mm-hmm. I'll she's she's an introvert. She doesn't like doing a lot of these because people are all in her face and mm-hmm. that yeah, kind yeah. of freaks her out. When I call her, she's never said no to me. She said no to a lot of people. Well, she knows you'll take care of her. Though. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, the last time she was here, she was here with her husband. She'd, they slept at my house, mm-hmm. you know, and then awesome. he was touring New York City while she was doing her signings in Queens. From Minnesota, he's never seen New York before. Oh. The guy was excited to see pigeons, <laughs> and I shit you not. There are pigeons in Minnesota? I guess no, not. I guess not. Maybe they look like pigeons and not rats <laughs> with wings. So, Maybe uh, that was a difference. They actually yeah. call birds in Minnesota. Here we call them pigeons. pigeons yeah. Yeah. We call but, them, yeah, we call yeah. them basketballs with wings. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah another example of someone being loyal to you and Molly, yeah. that the mere fact that someone who's introverted, which I understand because we went to an event and she came right up to us. Yeah. We, we looked at her and I'm going, Jeff, Jeff, that's <laughs> I was like, no, she, I know. She's I was in like, the I women's know. Royal Rumble. Oh my goodness, I, I, I know. That's yeah. amazing. No, but again, I was like, I was, I wasn't being like Jeff was with Marty Skrull and and Eric Bischoff. I was like, wow, I just saw her last week at the Royal yep. Rumble, and now look at her. Now. It's awesome. And she comes up up and I've had introduces the, I've herself. Had the, the pleasure, sweetheart of, of a lady. Uh, and every time I post it, I catch heat from jealous other promoters. Um, I've worked with a lot of talent when they were, no, and I hate to use the term, but they were nobody. Yeah, Diana Perazzo. It's fair. Diana Perazzo is green as grass. I worked with her at Woodbury Heights years ago. I think it was 2014 or 15. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew who she was other than people that worked with her at D2W in Wharton, New Jersey. That's it. Okay, I worked with her then. I have worked with her a little bit after that, and then now she's on TV. Jordan Grace. I booked her for a Legends of the Ring show. She was 16 years old. Nobody knew who she was. Nyla Rose. I brought to a big event back in 2014. Nobody knew who she was. Okay. Off the top of my head, it's, uh, there's, there's more, but I mean, yeah, th- Thunder yeah. Rosa. Yeah. Thunder Rosa. If you weren't from the West Coast, nobody knew who she was. I brought her over here. Boom. Mm-hmm. You know, she took off like wildfire. And, you know, and she's probably one of the most recognized names in the, the, the game right now. Yeah, you're right. That's called the NASTA effect. That's, <laughs> that's like what that. it is. The NASTA They've effect. been nasted. <laughs> 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 uh, but no, yeah, Jordan Grace is another one, too. Yeah. Just a little quick story that she, she really wasn't doing interviews. She'd be doing a lot of independent promotions. Didn't really like to talk. Yep. And we went up to her, approached her, very professional. Again, she, she didn't really, really initially jump at the at the at the opportunity for an interview, but the more consistent we were, she realized, all right, well, these guys, they seem pretty serious, and they seem like, you know, not a couple of douchebags trying to get an interview <laughs> or do a shoot interview or something, and then we eventually got her on, and she actually yep. said she enjoyed speaking to us about and it. Next so. thing you know, we're at Ring of Honor, you know, her her husband, Jonathan Gresham, mm-hmm. is, is wrestling. She's walking around. There's an empty seat right next to to Brian over yeah, here. Yeah, say, hey, like, Jordan. Hey, and guys, what's up? And she kind of watches, us. watches yep. the Like, really, really good people, too. And you also have to have a good, you also have to have a good judge of character because you know who these people, who, who's worth, you know, going that extra mile for. Right. Right, because, like I, I you call, said. I call them indie darlings. Like, yeah. look, their, their name, their face. Um, I know the independent fan base is very loyal. Mm-hmm. And they're very, they're very loyal to the person, but they're also loyal into researching about the person. So they're going to go the measures to, you know, find information on these people. So whether it's a a stream or or YouTube or whatever it is, they're going to find footage of these wrestlers and they're going to watch. So if I put up, you know, a um, a thing of like, oh, I'm bringing in Kimberly, people are like, oh, I remember her from Jersey. What else is she doing? And then she'll they'll go through and they'll look, they'll, you know, they'll look mm-hmm. them up like, oh shit, Abby Lath from NXT. Zeta Zhang, another person that I brought in that nobody really even heard of. Um, they will, they'll do the research. They'll find out who these people. Are. C.J. Dunning, another perfect example. Yeah. Like people, are like oh well, she only she was only with like NXT for like ten months. I'm like okay, but again, she's still a part of history. She's part of that brand. She has that connection. We brought her in. There was a huge response to C.J. Dunning uh, nice. Wrestling Universe. It was she had a line all day long. And afterwards, I've seen her. She's been. Uh, consistent on social media yes. as well. Uh, too. CJ Dunning is a private investigator who goes after um, people who do sex trafficking. So um, she's no joke. Like, and she's also a bodyguard. Mm-hmm. She'll, she'll and and also plays football. So yeah, yeah she she could put a hurting on somebody, and um, she 
does some serious, serious great work out there uh, trying to reunite uh, families with their children that are missing. Right. And, I mean, and she's legit too. I mean, like I said, like she's been posting on social mm-hmm. media after uh, she she did stuff with uh, with Kevin here, and I'm just like, man, like, listen, we can't get through everybody because yeah. again, this it, it would just be crazy here, and we by no means was this shitting on anybody. We just were like no. trying to talk about it's this. Ge- it's general about statements. The business. Like I can name, yeah. I can, like I can name names. It's not yeah. going to help anybody. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I can say, I can tell you scenarios of things that have happened. And as a fan, you're on social media, you're going to know who I'm talking about because these people make it very evident that they're shit bags and I don't need to expose them. They're exposing themselves every day by just doing the really grimy, dirty, you know, backstabbing stuff that they're doing and they're not even hiding it. So what's, what is for me to come on here and, and, you know, name names. I can easily say Dylan Hines is a piece of shit because Dylan Hines is a piece of shit. Yeah. Um, and I actually feel bad that his father has cancer and he's sick and he has to deal and protect his piece of shit son. You know, that kid doesn't belong in the business. He's in the business because of entitlement because his dad is who he is. And, you know, I can, like I said, we can be on here for another two hours going going through all these, uh, you know, these the list of nasty. Yeah, but I mean, again, it, though, it's like, it's again, it's just, it's just the main fact that hey, listen, if you're if you're going to do business, you know, just do it the right way because again, the, there's a wrestling is a huge piece of the pie, right? right? And everybody can can take from it, and it, you just don't have, you just have to do it. You know, in a in a proper manner with respect, loyalty, and it's it, it just something that you just need to call out people when you have to. But at the end of the day, though, you just got to be professional. And you got to look at it like this. We're a small business. Okay? We're a mom and pop business. Especially now than, than ever before during this pandemic. Support your mom and pop. Support your, your small business. Anybody, you know, can go to Applebee's and get a half-ass meal. And call it a day. But you know what? That little Carol's Cafe down the block, they need that money. You don't show up, they close down. Yeah. Applebee's, they're fine. I mean, they're privately owned, but they're corporately run. They're fine. You know, McDonald's, same thing. Privately owned, corporately run. They'll survive if you don't, uh, you know, don't show up to get your Egg McMuffin. But the bagel store down the block that's owned by some guy that's trying to put his kids through college, he might not survive when you don't get it, your, your bacon, egg, and cheese. Well, pork roll. Yeah, and it, yeah, I'm up north. <laughs> Hell and ham. No, I'm getting hungry right now. What are you talking about? And, and in these Sounds times, good. <laughs> and in these times too, right? With COVID and everything, yeah. and just support how, the good people. Yeah, support good independent wrestling. Support the good promoters. Um, you know, if you want to hit up my list, I have to go and edit it so I can get you know. Again, how many revisions do you think you'd have to do? Uh, I've done three. Okay, I think so far. I think one one went from the bad list to the good list. Because, if, I mean, if you look at it, it'll say, you know, like their stuff is legit, but not for me. Mm-hmm. That just means I don't really need to associate with that person, but they're not selling you bullshit. Yeah. You know, they're not selling fakes. You know, I might have personal issues with a lot of them on the list, even though they're on the good list. I might have had personal issues. They might have poached talent from behind my back. They might have talked shit behind me, my back. They might have talked shit about my company. You know what? I don't care. They're not doing the customer wrong fine but when you start doing the customer wrong that's when i take offense to it because you're making my job harder and sorry i work hard enough you know before this whole pandemic thing we saw it from going to wrestling conventions or going to in-store science and seeing the popularity and the excitement that people would have to want to see whatever particular talent was booked to go at a particular location right then it happened then everyone was scared beyond belief to leave their house to, to, you know, so somebody sneezed down the block, you're scared and yeah. you're, you're worried about it, right? You're driving with every, your windows closed. Exactly. <laughs> and hold, holding out. your breath inside a tunnel for some reason, yeah. thinking it's all airborne, you're going to get airborne and it was going to get in your skin and yeah. all that. Yeah. That's... And now, like, the big event happened and you said it was, it was different, but fans would appreciate it because they're like, well, you know, we didn't have this before. Right. Now it's like, you know, you, you start appreciating things you don't have anymore as opposed to a when you little did. bit of normalcy. Little bit of but speaking of that, though, do you think when hopefully all this is behind us in the near future, it goes exactly back to the way it is? Or is virtual signing now is, is kind of a thing in the future? Not that it's going to be the basis because people will still want to see it. It depends on who you ask. One-on-one. If you ask some of the OG um, vendors, they'll say the virtual signing is going to last forever. 
And I'm going to tell you exactly why they're going to, they're going to say that because they no longer want to leave their house to do, they don't want to, they don't want to hustle no more. Yeah. Just easy to have someone come over, sit them down in front of a camera for two hours and do some sales. Also, those same people are the ones that are causing the problems. They're talking shit. They're getting under people's skin. They're backstabbing. They're poaching. Now, they're not going to show up at a convention because now they got to face the music. Yeah. Now, all those people they were talking shit about are now within 20 feet from them. Now, what do you do? Keyboard's there, that, not there to protect you anymore. I was about to say, stay by the keyboard then because right. they're never going to go to those events. So, that's, that's what it is. So... You're always going to have that virtual of uh, virtual auction, virtual sale because you're going to have the ones that no longer want to do the public stuff. Okay, me personally, um, I will continue to do them as long as the talent wants to do them. I'm never going to push it on them and say, "Hey, I want to do a weekend where we're doing a store here, a store here, and a virtual." It's going to be, "Hey, I got two store signings. Do you mind doing a virtual?" No, that's fine. We'll just do the stores. I'm not going to push it no more. Because I rather the in person to person, you know, fan mix with the talent. They people want to see these people, and now that stores are starting to open at larger capacities, mm-hmm. and um, there's more stores available for people. Like we have an exclusive deal with a couple of stores. We have a couple more stores that are opening that have reached out to us and want us to bring talent to them. Great. Okay. Really great. Like you know, now I'm I might not have a, enough weekend to do all everything that I want to. So now I have to start picking and choosing where we're going to bring certain talent, depending on the market, the fan base and who the talent is. So that again, it's a new aspect of my job now. Now it's just not, not just two places. Now I might have six places. So I have to decide where I'm going to bring them. I want the interaction. I want that fan, you know, uh, talent interaction. The talent likes it. The, virtual they like to a certain you know aspect depends on you know if they're a germaphobe obviously they like virtual the virtuals yeah, of course if they're like eff it you know um you know i'm not a mask hole or whatever you know <laughs> they're going to refer to it as they're going to do the store signings they don't mm-hmm. care i mean honestly i'd be 98 percent of the talent i brought in has been like whoop with the mask like they don't care like yeah. they're done they're over it is mm-hmm. you know and this is before the vaccines you know, now that the vaccine is starting to roll out and people are getting the vaccines, um, I think the virtuals are eventually going to die a little because more and more conventions are going to happen. And I think yeah. you're going to start to see newer conventions. Hmm. Like we have the new one coming up um, May 15th in Baltimore, Celeb Fest. Okay. Um, we have, uh, right now we have Deanna Perrazzo booked for that. We have another one we haven't announced yet. We're going to announce it the Monday after WrestleMania. Nice. And, um and we have another local-ish talent that we're waiting to see if she gets her vaccines in time. So I think that's what you're going to start to see. You're going to start to see a little bit more of these conventions open up because I think some of these promoters um, are like, you know what? Why am I going to just go to a show and bring in three, four people at a table? Let's start one. Yeah. Let that's everybody else wow. bring the talent. You know? I'll do all the promoting and the running around and the booking of the hotel and the table line, you know, all that stuff and let the vendors bring the talent and everybody works together to promote, you know, and, and get the, bring in the, the new fan base. I have good feelings about the one in, in Baltimore. Um, it's not too far from the airport and it's like some kind of sports arena or something that's down there. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I got a good feeling about that. Like I feel that um, that's going to be a pretty good turnout because I, I feel that, Fans need something. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You can tell they're eager for something. They're going to see it. They're going to run into it. That's why when you start doing the virtuals, believe it or not, maybe it was being done before then. I don't know. But I I will will say I did one in 2017 with the Twisted Sisters. In my my office, we did a live podcast, um, and then we did a virtual sale with them where they were selling their merch on the thing. I'm not saying I invented it. I mean, it was 2017 pre COVID. No, no, yeah. Not that you're inventing it, but that's the first time that I had actually seen it. Because yeah. I was thinking, too, in myself, because Jeff and I would go to conventions. We'd go mm-hmm. to WrestleCon. We'd go to, to signings where people were doing it. I would go to, you know, Exoticas, and yep. I would go to AVNs in Las Vegas. So I was thinking, how is this going to work now? It's all done. When I saw the virtual sign that you were doing for 365 Promotions, I was like, wow. It's like, that's at least something for yeah. somebody to be excited yeah. about. So I was like, because in, in a situation now where, I mean... A lot of your, your your business was to go to locations to bring talent. One, 
locations are shut down because they want to deal with uh, people getting infected. Talent doesn't want to go because they don't want to get infected. Fans are scared out yep. of their mind to do it. So how does one work around that? And when I saw what you were doing, I was like, wow, that's that's a great idea. Not and that a, you invented it, flight, but... And the flights were cheap. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The flights and the hotel rooms were, bookings yeah. were cheap. Well, too. to be honest with you, I would, I would say 95% of the talent has stayed with my house. Because great, their, yeah. their philosophy was, we're doing a virtual there anyway. And you're going to make sure that we're taken care of. Yeah, yeah. So who knows what the hotel is going to do? You don't know if they're freaking cleaning properly or not. They're not doing breakfast or food anymore in the hotels because of COVID. Um, And then Jersey at one point, well, everything was like shut down at like 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, businesses were closing. So the time we got home from a signing, everything's closed. So they were like, let's just, uh, we'll stay at your house. It's fine. Everybody gets their own room and bathroom anyway. So it's like, and we all get to wake up, leave together, come home together, eat together. So it's... It worked out really. It worked out really, really well. I mean, and uh, you know, I don't know if my wife agrees, but you know, <laughs> some of the talent she loves, some of the talent she was just like, get them out. You know, <laughs> you know there's only so much you uh, you, oh. you can tolerate. But I mean, I'm doing this at minimum two weekends a month. Oh. Yeah. So you know, there's at one point my house it has um, talent in it at least six days a month. Yeah, exactly. And that, that was probably an exciting thing, like I said, maybe not to your wife. But again, yeah. that was what what intrigued me the most, that that was just, again, the reinvention. Because like nowadays, if you want to do meetings, you can Zoom call somebody, you can do this and that. And that was just a great extension, the fact that now it seems things are shifting back to what we call normalcy. And, and that's really evolve. exciting to Look, say. It's like any well, business. You have yeah. to evolve. You know, yeah. use Jurassic Park. Yeah. You know, <laughs> when they're when they're walking around and, you know, Good movie, by the way. They're yeah. in the theme park, and he's like, oh, what does this mean for us? Well, it means we're extinct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because what are they going to do? Their jobs are gone. There's, they had to They have to evolve. You have to get, you know, change. You can't just sit still. No. I think I posted the other day. I said, if, uh, you know, if you're sitting down and you're standing still, you got to move no. forward. No. You got to move forward. You got you to gotta be innovative. You, you can't just assume and have a sense of entitlement that everything's going to come to you. You need to get out there, and you need to... Go get it. But at the same time, you need to do it in an ethical manner and stop burning bridges in the process. Very true. Kevin, man, really appreciate the time you've given us, man. Uh, like I said, this could go on for hours, <laughs> for days. And we, Let's go, you, Mitch. <laughs> but again, though. Um, oh, that's a whole different show exactly. right there. It's a whole different show. <laughs> but again, though, man, thank you for your time, man. Again, and also in-person interviews are really much better. We could have done this through Zoom. Yeah. Or whatever, but. That's what I told you. Yeah, yeah. I was like, we're going to react off each other's yeah, like, reactions, yeah. you know. Yeah. Like Zoom or a phone call. Like, yeah. I, you don't know if I'm laughing my ass off of yeah. what you said. Yeah. <laughs> or you could be on like a 30-second delay. That or, might, yeah, or, yeah, or, why, why is Kevin just sitting there yeah. looking at me when he's frozen actually on Zoom? But uh, <laughs> No, but yeah, man. Uh, uh, thanks for uh, coming up here. And again, though. Uh, we're excited for what the future holds for you know for you. And we're excited what the future holds, obviously, for the entire wrestling business. Yeah. Love is a lot. Yeah, for you well. guys, too. You know, you yeah. guys got some plans going forward. Yeah. And, uh, uh, we, I'm we're sure back. we can incorporate yes. us together in some yes. stuff. Obviously, mm-hmm. if you like, listen, man, like if you again, uh, on the olive branch because you have to like work with good people, right? And you get that vibe, whatever. So, and then you guys need again virtual hosts. You never know, but uh, <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, definitely let us know and stuff. And again, continue success. Damage three sixty five promotions, man. Uh, where can they find uh, you and uh, on social media? Okay, um, well, our website is d three six five promotions dot com. Pretty much. Everything that we're doing, um, pre-sales down to um, uh, uh, announcements and, and alumni all on that page. On uh, Instagram, we are D365 underscore promotions with Damage365 Radio on Twitter. And uh, Facebook, we're at Damage365. And uh, yeah, we, you, can, um, you can find us. So you can reach out to me anytime, whether the business page or my personal page on Facebook. And um We'll, we'll link you to what, what, what's going on, you know, and if you guys are doing something, you know, I'm going to promote you guys as well. Awesome. That is Kevin Nassau, ladies and gentlemen. 